The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. All right, folks. How are you doing today? Welcome to the Diagnostic Trading Hour here. I'm your host, Daryl Martin, and we're on TFNN.com. And I just want to remind you that you can also listen to us on your phone on the go at TFNN.MOBI. Um, I use it on my iPhone. I can go around and I can literally listen to it, even if I have other applications open and things like that. So it's a great um, resource for you to use if you want to listen while you're on the go. And I um, wanted to remind everybody you can call in if you have any questions about the markets in general, about binaries, about bull spreads on Nadex, about any of the areas of diagnostic trading like fundamental, statistical, seasonal, technical analysis. Um, you can give me a call at one 927 6648 Or if you're outside the U.S., you can call at 727-445-1044. And one more time for you, that U.S. number is 877-927-6648. All right, well, um, just go ahead and do a quick market recap. Uh, the markets on the day are pretty flat right now. So we got the S&P up basically a point, and uh, the Russell's down half a point. NASDAQ's up about a point. Um, the Dow's up about 16 points. So really not a big move on the day. There was a little bit of a drop overnight, and the market seemed to recover a little bit on the open on that, and uh, now they're waning a little bit. So right back up there near the highs. And if we go over and look at the currencies... You know, we got some moderate movement, nothing spectacular uh, to write home about. We can even pull those up on the charts there so and look at them and just sort of see, you know, the movement we had. Um, sort of in the same boat as most of the others, you know, had some, you know, pullbacks and everything dropped down. The dollar getting stronger, market getting weaker overnight, and then everything pulling back up. So we'll see how long that can really hold. Uh, one of the big issues that we have going on is the VIX. So if we go over and check out the VIX, and look at where it's sitting right now, pull it back to a daily chart level on it. A couple things that you're going to see is we can see the last couple times we'll get this level um, right here on the 19th and on the 26th of April. And we go back over and let's just look at the S&P and sort of see the correlation there. Okay, So we go back and we go to the 19th. And again, just to you know, help you out, again, that's the... 19th of July and the 26th of April. So looking at the 19th of July, right over here, then we can see that we did have a bit of a pullback, you know, about 40, 50 points right there on the S&P um, after it hit that peak low. And then over here, if we go back on the April 26th here, I want to believe, yeah, April 26th, and check out the S&P and what happened on April 26th, then what we'll see is on that day to right around that day we had a couple days that were choppy a little bit of spike up and then we literally started a pretty big uh, downtrend from there you know basically hitting 1400 the same you know high levels we're hitting right now and then it dropped down a dramatic amount we had a low here of 1261 so basically a 140 point drop within a few days after the vix hit that level so we really are at a definite area right now, um, and if you are long on the market, and there, you know there are reasons to be long, um, but if you are long on the market right now, you definitely want to have some hedges in. So yeah, definitely have your puts on. <laughs> um, and then you know, as far as this summer, you know what's going on in August. Basically, it should be moderately quiet. Um, a lot of the earnings are out, and uh, the big thing is going to be to see if the ECB actually makes a few steps. To do something, you know, Greece got downgraded yesterday. That you know was one of the big factors that led off. I mean, downgraded again. I don't know how much more they downgraded. It's negative now, so I don't know if there's worse than negative, but um, you know, on fire or whatever. But uh, anyways, so anyway, so if you go in there and you look at you know some of the possibilities of what's coming up over the next you know month, basically what you're going to hear is everybody's going to be listening to every little key word that comes out of the Byron Nelson um, you know conference coming up here in a couple of weeks and you know that's out in wyoming and all the feds are going to say their things and they're going to be listening to bernacki and they're going to be listening you know, to Merkel, or not Merkel, but um 
You'll be listening to you know, the finance minister over in the EU to see this. You know, what do they have to say that's going to contribute um, to their possible quantitative easing plans? So a lot of people are thinking that there's not a whole lot of possibility of quantitative easing, and then there's a whole lot that are saying that they think there's going to be a big QE coming up in September. So um, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out, because if Europe does pass on September 12th when the German Supreme Court rules the constitutionality Basically, uh, the whole, you know, basically EU coming together as one big finance bond versus having all these countries issuing these individual bonds and then, you know, falling apart and everybody to bail them out. It's just, we'll just make everybody bail about everybody no matter what. <laughs> and uh, so if they do that, you know, that big bazooka going on. And, uh, you know, definitely want to make sure that, you know, you're ready for that. But again, that's going to come up in September. So, you know, expect a, you know, quiet market unless we get some big announcement. I don't see anything big, huge coming out good unless it's Europe actually announcing concrete steps and actions. But I think they're basically just going to be on hold until the big decision in September. And I think that's why you have the exact same thing with QE. Um, I think they're putting it on hold, too. They're, they're just sort of watching how everything plays out. And if you were trying to figure out, you know, sort of the schedule of some of these things, what's coming up, um, one of the resources I like to use is Forex Factory. And I'll go over to that and you can pull up the calendar. And, uh, you know, I sort of know what it is, but if you find any of the previous announcements and you can go and you can look on here and you can find the Fed funds rate, you know, so as you're scrolling down and you, know, you can really narrow it down for yourself if you want to, just sort of like uncheck everything and then just go to dollar and click apply filter. And so when you're looking for all the reports and you're trying to figure it out, you can literally scroll week by week and see what reports are coming out and until you find the actual, you know, announcements coming up or the Fed funds rate and everything else. So you, you can literally just scroll through that and use that, and you're going to have your GDPs and your home sales. And, um, you know, right here we got the Jackson Hole Symposium. So notice how they're actually putting that day one, August 31st, day two, September 1st. So that's going to bring an interesting end to the summer, and um, it's going to bring a lot of people, you know, very curious to see how, you know, what everybody's going to say. And um, it's, it's pretty nice. They actually go in here and they tell you what a lot of these things mean. So if you're like, well, what is this? And basically, it's an economic symposium held in the Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and it's attended by the central bankers, the finance ministers, the academic professors, um, and basically the big financial market pistons around the world. And they're closed to the press, but they usually come out and talk with the press throughout the day. Okay, so um, it's interesting. It's like, come on, open it to the press, but you know, they you know they want to lay out the real big problems. They don't want people freaking out every time they say something, or plotting, or you know, whatever you want to say. And um, so. Anything that they come out and say to the reporters in between their meetings is going to have a big influence on market volatility. So that's going to be coming up here at the end of the month. And uh, just, you know, keep your eye out on that. And then, you know, as we scroll forward and we start looking, you know, what else is going to be coming out, we'll have the ADP report right after that the following week. And then, like I said, the big, big thing you're going to be looking for is the FOMC statement. That's going to be September 13th, but on the 12th, and it conveniently aligns, um, is when the Supreme Court in Germany is supposed to actually make their decision. We'll see if they're going to make it on the 12th, if they're going to make it on the 15th. I've, I've seen both dates out there. They make it on the 12th, that really opens up the Fed to decide what it wants to do based on what um, Germany decides to do. So that 12th, you know, 13th, those are going to be huge days um, in September. But also, like I said, the very end of this month, the very beginning of next month in the Jackson Hole. Keep your eye out. And, um, you know, as far as right now, just uh, you know, be looking for, I'm, I'm thinking quiet markets unless we get a big announcement out of somebody. Um, and, I mean, who knows? You know, Italy could, you know, default tomorrow. So, <laughs> we never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, France is back in recession. Spanish bonds, you know, explode, everything else. In the middle of all this, you know, leaves a trader a little bit like, what do I do? How do I trade? And how do I deal with this, you know, increased market risk and volatility? And um, it goes quiet one minute, and then it goes crazy the next. And that's actually why I trade over on the Nadex Exchange, um, because it actually lets me control my risk. And if you go over to TFNN.com, then what you'll see is a logo on the right side of the page. And uh, that's a Nadex banner right there. If you click on the Nadex banner, you can then sign up for an account. Just hit Create Account. And you sign up for a live account, you can fund it with $100. Okay, literally, it's a $100 funding requirement. You get a demo account uh, for free. It takes about 15 seconds. And you go in, and you just put in your username, first name, last name, phone, email address, and apply for demo. And a few seconds later, they're going to send you a password. You can immediately get access to the account. And um, you even get immediate access to the live account. It's just, you know, you got to wait to fund it. Um, once it's approved, you can do a, what's called an e-check fund, 
and basically um, they'll actually credit you up to $250 immediately while they're waiting on the e-check to clear, or you can wire, or you can send a check in the mail, you know, whatever your preferred uh, method of funding your accounts is. And once you log into the account, so once you've done that, you just click log in up here, and you can get in, and there's a lot of information on the site that's helpful, like, you know, what markets are traded, and, you know, on those pages, you can see things like contract specs, so, you know, what hours are they traded, and, uh, you know, we talk a lot about them on here, so if you have any questions about these at all, just uh, let me know, and I'll be happy to help you. But once you log in, you can um, you'll get access to the demo account, and you can see what curds, uh, what, what, what trades, what curds, what trades are currently trading, and you can see the bull spreads, the binaries, and whenever the markets are quiet, a lot of times that might be a time where you want to be looking at binaries. So you know, if we're looking at the markets right now, and I pull this up and back out to you know, we'll just say you know, 15 minute bars, and. Uh, you know, right now we're at lunchtime, right? So you get that little lunchtime lag. And, I mean, you know, we have basically one or two point up and down movements. And with a pretty strong resistance level up here, um, you know, I mean, it's up basically at 14.03 is the, you know, most recent high. And, again, you can go back to the day and always be looking at your daily charts. Um, when you're trading, I don't care what kind of chart type you use, you want to be looking at just the daily bar charts also. And um, so knowing that we have that high right there, Yesterday, uh, 1403.25, and then back and back down. It's like, okay, well, that's going to be a pretty strong resistance level. So what can I do to take advantage of that? And there are several things that you can do. Let's say if you're not, you don't want to be directional. You want to be neutral on the market. Then you can go into what's called binary trades. Now, binaries are really cool instruments. There's a lot of ways to trade them, but uh, neutrality is one of the ways to trade them. And you can literally wait until it, it peaks back up and then sell it off. You know, there's just basically just depending on exactly what you want to do and how you want to do it. So, like, right here, like this trade, right now, I mean, it's it's complete profit. But when it was up higher, okay, so, like, a little bit earlier, we had it up here around 1400 okay? Let's see what it was doing. And that's really not, you know, let's see here. We had 1030. Let's check it out, like, noon. And um, so right around 12 o'clock, and we'll, let me even back down more down to, like, one minute. Okay, so 1204. Um, this trade was right up around, you know, almost 1400 and we can pull up the charts and we can see how did this binary react when it was getting up there. What was it worth? And um, so you can see that, you know, earlier in the day, it was trading. I mean, it was it's pretty low because they didn't expect a lot of volatility. But it's 12 or 13 bucks. You would have put the trade on and you closed it out right now. Basically, you would have captured about a $10 profit on the trade. And that's just on neutrality, nothing happening. Okay? So you can go in and you can actually place orders on trades. And so now we have, we're moving into the 1 to 3 o'clock time frame. And so you could be looking at ranges, sort of like a, not exactly like, but similar to what you could call a credit spread um, to capture time decay. But instead of, you know, normal credit spreads, where you're usually looking at, you know, a week or a month, you're looking at, you know, maybe 30 minutes to two hours. So you're able to capture credit spreads over and over and over and over again. All right, we'll stay right there, folks. And uh, when you come back, we'll take a look at some more stuff on the binaries and the bull spreads. Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs, these newer issues issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. 
With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome back to the Diagnostic Training Out here. And uh, we're just pulling up the calendar here. We want to look at what is coming up tomorrow. So uh, we can see sort of, you know, some trades you might be able to make. Really, the only uh, big report we got left this week is going to be the unemployment claims. We also have trade balance. Um, but unemployment claims, of course, being the hot topic right now. Trade balance is, is, is obviously very important, and that's really your value between your imported and exported goods, and uh, basically just what the demand is. And so that's going to, you know, of course, influence GDP and a lot of other numbers. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a helpful, you know, indicator to be aware of, uh, economic indicator. But also we have, of course, the unemployment claims at 730 Central, 830 Eastern Time. And, uh, you know, it's... Always, always a volatile time usually when this comes out. So what can you do um, to actually place a trade during this time of day? And there's a couple different things, a couple different ways that you can you can trade it. One of the ways is you can wait till after it comes out and then put a trade on, or, you know, which sometimes the move has happened, right? So, uh, but if you wait till after it, the way that you do that is it, it goes and it shoots in its initial direction. Usually you're going to get at least a 50% pullback, if not 100% pullback. And then it goes back in that direction. So you wait on the pullback of at least 50% to get in on the position. And if you want to do that, then you could use spreads or you could use binaries on the trades. Um, I like to use spreads probably more often than anything. And so if you're trading to, say, the S&P 500, you could also get the small caps, the Dow. Um, those are really my fa three favorite indices on the Nadex exchange. And uh, if you go over and look at them, then what you can see is, you know, you could probably look at a shorter term trade unless you're thinking that it's going to have just a long term impact on the day. But if you're thinking like, hey, this trade is going to be over 
in a couple hours. Then since the announcement comes out at 7.30 and a new spread will actually come up that'll start at um, 7 and close at 9, which would be actually considered as a 10 o'clock closing, 10 o'clock Eastern, so 8 Eastern, um, it'll start, 10 Eastern, it'll close. So since it comes out 30 minutes for that announcement, you can actually use that spread to be your trade. It'll be very, very close to the floor or ceiling. And you have a couple options. You can put it on directionally. You can put it on as a straddle where you buy the spread above and below the market. And so if we look at you know what a straddle would look like, is literally, let's say the market was sitting at 1400 right now, um, then you could buy the spread above and the spread below. So that way if the market moved in either direction, as long as it moved more than your risk on the two box spreads, then you would uh, you'd profit. And you know, like right now, like the risk on these two trades uh, is pretty minor. If we put them side by side, then what you can see is on one contract, you have uh, basically a risk of $29, okay? And down um, with a profit potential of $100 on either side, so therefore, risk at 29 with a profit potential of $71. And the profit potential means that it goes up to 14.10 or down to 13.90. So 13.90 sounds like a big move, but you know, and again, this is, this is right before unemployment claims. So you'd be looking at a trade similar to this if the market was sitting at this price, where you could go in and you could put a straddle on the market. Um, now, another thing is, let's say you're directional. For whatever reason, you think unemployment claims are going to be better this week than they were last week or worse. Um, so if you think they're going to be better and you're bullish on the market, then what you could do is you could give yourself give yourself a 10-point stop loss for a very small price. So let's say, you know, the market's sitting at 1398.5 in the morning, like right where it's sitting right now, okay? And you went in here and you bought or you sold five of these, okay? Then what would happen is you could go in and buy the S&P 500, your risk on the trade is $105 um, total, but not or $105 on the spread. That's actually not your total risk. And your total risk is the difference between where the S&P 500 is currently trading. So if we're saying 1398.5, all right, and minus the cost of the spread. So um, if we say, you know, right there, I'll update that. I'll pull that calculator back up. So just to sort of freeze time there, we got 1398.5 minus 1397.9. Your risk on the trade, and then we multiply that times 50, okay? It's 30 bucks. So I don't know if you get that. I mean, that's huge. That, I, I, that's, seriously, that would be your risk on a futures trade, $30, because you're hedging it with the spread. That's not even a full point of risk. Okay, and what would happen is it would actually hedge you all the way down to 1390. So if the market dropped to 1390 within the next couple hours, and you were long on the S&P, all right, for a $30 risk, that that's all that would happen, even if it dropped down. So I'm going to go more into this hedge trade because I want you to be ready if you want to be able to do this tomorrow morning. Stay right there. We'll come back right after the break. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits ranged from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations, including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, this is Daryl Martin on the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, let's do a quick market wrap, and then we're going to talk about this uh, hedge trade that we're looking at. So you can understand how to do it if you want to take advantage of it tomorrow morning. Right now, the market is just uh, still flat up a couple points uh, across the board. So just about everything except for corn. Corn is moving and uh, continues to move and continues to amaze just about everybody on um, you know what's going on with it. And um, if you want to take a quick look, we can check out corn and just sort of see what's going on over there. So uh, corn looks like it may be uh, thinking about busting a new high. So um, you know, beware, be ready, and uh, it's setting up. So the last high we had was eight twenty. Five, we're sitting back up at 814 and uh, definitely moving up after that little bounce down. We've basically had one low, and ever since then, we haven't created a lower low. And it's uh, really sitting tight on this uh, simple moving average here. So, you know, one of the things we'll also uh, see if we take a look before the end of the show at some possible corn trade setups. So, if you're looking to get into that, and you'll know what to do. And so, let's go over here and let's check out the SMP uh, 500 potential box trade. And what we're doing right here, or not box trade, but uh, the hedge trade. And what we're doing is we're saying, okay, what would happen if we bought at 1398 and then, like, right before, say, the unemployment claims report? All right, because for whatever reason, we thought it was going to be better, and we thought that caused the market to break out to the high side. And then we sold the spread, so the 1390 to 1400. How would that look on a chart? And once you see this, you'll see exactly why I call it a box spread. Okay, so we're going to go in here. 
And we're going to go to Drawing Tools, and we're going to add on a rectangle. So let me do it over here a little, work a little easier so you can see what I'm doing. So, and uh, most platforms have uh, Drawing Tools here. I'm using the Ninja Trader platform. And go into Rectangle, and then choose, and then basically drag it down. And I usually edit it um, once I put it on there. So, you know, we're going to assume this one expires in an hour, half, hour and a half, okay? So that was, that's sort of what you'd be looking at if you're looking to put a, a spread on that expired at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, right before the news announcement. So an hour and a half from now would be 2 o'clock. So uh, let's see here, 2 o'clock uh, Central Time. And make sure you line it up all the times in the Natix platform are Eastern Time. So you always want to line that up. And um, I can notice make sure my numbers are you know flat right there. So I really do reflect the box spread. Okay. So again, this is an example for tomorrow morning. This is not a uh, an educational trade setup for the moment. <laughs> um, anyways, and so on that, and um, right here, if we go over and we look at this, then what you'll be able to see is the fact that uh, let's see here, change that. All right, what you'll be able to see is you can go in and you can buy the S&P 500, and Basically, for every dollar it loses going down, then the spread is making money, okay, going down. That's the hedge. So it will actually cover you all the way down to 1390. All right, so right here, literally, right down to 1390. And at 1390, basically at a 10 point loss there, you'd have to decide it's time to get out. And so what did that do for you? All right. Well, when we looked at it, we had a $30 risk. And the way that we figured out our risk is we took the cost of the underlying market versus the cost of the spread. So, you know, right now the cost of the spread is even cheaper. And um, it's $100. And so right now, um, if we go in and the market is at, we'll put the uh, the difference between the two. Chart them up there. So at the S&P at 1398.5, Okay. And then the uh, cost of the spread at 1398. Now this, I'm using flat numbers just so we can stay, you know, make it easy. 0.5. Every point on the S&P 500 is worth 50 bucks. So we're going to multiply that times 50. It's a $25 risk. So you literally have a two tick risk on this trade. Okay. So, but you have a huge stop loss on the trade. Meaning you have a stop loss of you know several hundred dollars for only twenty five dollars risk, all the way down to thirteen ninety. Now, what's the catch? What's the trade off? Right, that's the next question that comes up. Okay, well here is the the catch of the trade off, if you want to call it that, is the spread is making money when the S and P is losing money. All right. On the flip side. The, S &P, the spread is losing money when the S&P is making money. That's why they're hedging each other off. So where do you start making money? Okay, that's the catch. All right? And basically you start making money when it busts out of the box. So in this case, when it moves up a point and a half, and then remember what we have, we have a $25 risk, half a point there. So when it moves up to 14.05, so basically you need a two-point move, and you'll no longer have that $25 risk. Okay? Above that is pure profit. So for again only half a point stop loss, you got to stop loss all the way down to 1390. That heads you, and the only way to and basically to, the catch is to get rid of that $25 risk. It has to break above 1400.5, and after that point, you have you don't have to worry about it at all. Okay, so uh, that really is, I mean that's literally how simple it is. You go in and just look at the difference between the two, try to find the one that's closest to the floor or ceiling because you want it to be able to break out of the box. I mean if you go and pick a box where you know is right in the middle, that's not going to do as much good. So if we go over here and we look at this box right here and check it out, like this one right here is 1390, you know, 5, 1390, there we go. So like that one's a little bit more in the middle, 1390 to 1400, or maybe 1395 to 1405. Uh, that's, that's a good example of being right in the middle. So if you chose that box instead, we put this thing up here, well, then it has to move quite a bit up or down. All right? So basically it has to move further for you to get rid of that risk. Now, on the flip side, let's say you thought the market was going to go down and you wanted to hedge it. What could you do? You could go in and you could actually buy the 1400 to 1410 spread. Okay? So if we go up, we'll just move up our box right here. 
So now we have a 1400 to 1410 spread being hedged. And what is our risk on this trade? Works the exact same way. We go in and we pull up the S&P 500. And we go, okay, 1398.5, uh, stay consistent here. And then minus 1400.5. So on this trade, we have a two point risk. We have a $100 risk, all right? But we have an 11 point, you know, we have a huge stop loss. So we have a basically a five four hundred fifty dollar stop loss um, for only a hundred dollar risk, only a two point risk on the S and P right before unemployment claims. So that's the idea that you're looking at is putting those boxes on either above or below um, the market as close to where the market's trading as possible. Again, you want the and if you're having trouble figuring it out, literally just draw the box on the chart. It'll become real apparent to you because obviously if the market's here, it's only going to make money if it goes in there. So. You obviously, if you want to be short the market, you want it as close as possible to this price where it can hedge you because this is the hedge. So now on the flip side, maybe you don't want to do a hedge. Maybe you just want to do a straddle. So, and you're like, you know what? I don't even want to be directional. And so you can, you know, copy that. Let's see if it'll let us move one of these. There we go. And this is what the straddle would look like on a chart. So where you could go in and you could buy and sell, and no matter what direction it goes, then you're set up to make money so long as it covers more than the cost of the straddle. So which we looked at earlier is about 30 bucks and uh, $100 profit potential. So now that's also looking at the shorter term time frames. You can go in and you could look at the dailies. So they're going to come out about 30 minutes before the news announcement as well. And you can take advantage of those if any of them line up really well for you. And there's a good chance they will since they're 30 minutes before the news announcements when the, the daily... Uh, the 8 to 415 ones will be the ones you'd want to look at. And then you can also check out the daily over here and see if they line up, if they give you better, you know, they may give you a better option. Like right now, these are at 1400, so they're closer than the 8 to 415. And then one of the other big advantages of the daily right here is they're wider. So they're going to have more profit potential for you, $100 more per spread, okay? Which also means more hedge potential. So instead of being, you know, say like 1400 or 1410, this actually could head you all the way up to 1440 or down to 1360. And, you know, if you're looking at that trade right now, and if we want to go on and let's say we want to put this trade on as a hedge, and I'll, uh, I'll get rid of this one, and let's just say you want to, uh, let's say, buy the S&P 500 at the moment. Again, not, not doing a trade recommendation at all right now, an educational trade recommendation. I'm just literally going through and showing you how the hedge strategy works. Then on this trade, we're going to edit this box. And this box goes, let's see here. Make sure we got the right information on the box. I'll hit uh, sell, pull it up for you. So we can have it to the side there. So we're comparing it. And what you'll be able to see is on the box, the way that it works, 1360 is the floor. Okay. So we'll put 1360 right there. And 1400 is the ceiling. So we put 1400 right there. And it expires at 415 Eastern. Or, you know, in my case here in a uh, grand state of Texas, we got a uh, 315 Eastern, or uh, Central. So, and hit uh, apply, hit OK, and uh, we'll bring our chart, there right, we go, a little bit, got a lot of hedge room there. And you'll literally, this is your hedge, okay? So, if you bought the S&P right now and you sold this spread, it would hedge you all the way down to 1360 until the end of the trading day today. So, I mean, that gives you a pretty big hedge to where it was, you know, just a few days ago. And also, you look at a couple things. Like, what would my risk be on this trade? So, on this trade, if you want to go in and put a hedge trade on right now, and you actually want to do this exact trade, just to, like, hey, just in case the thing decides to break out crazy at the last part of the trading day, and you want to put this on, then your risk would be the difference between where you sold the spread and where you bought the S&P. So, if you bought the S&P at 1397.75, and you sold the spread at 1396.5, your risk on the trade would be 1.25 points. That'd be $62.50 total risk on a full mini, <laughs> um, basically on, a, on an S&P futures contract when you combine it with the hedge. And it would have to break out um, and make that, you know, that profit. It'd have to basically break above here and make, you know, that very small um, profit goal. And so, again, if we pull that up, or anybody who's uh, won that calculation again, you just take again, where is the S&P trading? 
minus where are you selling the spread, okay? 1.25 is your risk, so $62.50. So basically, you have, have to break a point, 1.25 above 1,400. We're going to get rid of that $62 risk. I mean, that literally is nothing, you know, one and a quarter points uh, movement right there. And the S&P is your risk. And, I mean, you can put a stop loss at one and a quarter points and get stopped out any minute. So that's a really, really good stop loss. Now, on the flip side, let's say you think the S&P is going to go ahead and pull down today. Okay? Then we can take this. We can move it up here. All right? To 1400 And, by the way, you also are going to have that. The daily spreads are going to start trading at 6 o'clock Eastern. So you can even put on a trade tonight getting ready for tomorrow um, to hedge off a trade. So, and you can even use these to hedge off like spider trades. So you can even help hedge off the, the SPY with it. You just want to make sure you equalize the points out. And I want to say it's, uh, what is it, 50 um, or 100 spreads per spread. You just want to make sure every dollar move in the spiders is going to be equal. So that would be 100. So 100 spider ETFs or IWMs or diamonds, uh, in order to hedge off with the Nadex spread. Just make sure you're looking at a future chart for really getting the gauge, but they'll be very, very, very close in price, so the hedge will should be pretty much spot on for you. Just, of course, the ETFs only trade during cash hours versus uh, the futures are trading, you know, pretty much around the clock, except for a small gap where they're, you know, doing the rebalances on everything. So on this trade, if we wanted to flip around and we wanted to buy the spread to hedge ourselves, then you can go in and we'll move that over there. So you can see exactly how this works. What would your risk be right now if you want to short the S&P 500, okay? Have a hedge all the way up to 1440. All right, so literally meaning like the Nadex spread is making money for you all the way up to 1440. So what would the risk on this trade be? Well, where are you buying the spread? You're buying it at 1401.2 minus um, where the S&P is at right now, so 13.98. So 3.2 would be a $150 risk on the trade, uh, basically counting on the market not breaking out. But if it does, then it's going to cover you all the way up. So you basically have a three-point uh, risk on that trade. So if you want to do it, so if you wait until it gets up to 1,400, you'll have even less risk in that sense, uh, just based on where the trade's at. So. If you don't like the risk and you're doing a news trade, you may, again, want to choose a shorter time frame, like a two-hour. So tomorrow morning, make sure you're looking at the 8 to 10 um, time frame, and then also be looking at the 8 to 415 and be looking at the dailies. And compare those three to find out which one's going to give you the best protection, the best hedge. And if you just want to do the spreads, you can do that, and you can go in and, and you can place the trade. So my favorite strategy is to do the hedge strategy because there's no limit on your profit. So if it's a big, crazy move day, then you get that. And also, a lot of times you have a little less risk. The only downside is you have a little bit more capital requirement because you're going to put money up on the Nadex side, which is very small. But then you also got to put money up on the futures side and have the money there for the drawdown that the Nadex is making in a separate account. So uh, anyway, so uh, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back after the commercial break, and we'll look at just doing the outright spread for the same trade and pull some corn stuff up, too, right after the commercial break. take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Put the power of the Chapman Way methodology to work for you no matter what market you trade what time frame you trade in or your trading style the opening call basil chapman's daily market newsletter is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now Catch Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. The Money Masters, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome back to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, I just want to take a quick look at corn for you. So it looks like we do have a long signal on corn right now. And I've uh, been having one basically uh, since about the afternoon. So pushing up just as far as the intraday uh, chatter going on there. And, um, you know, it's like it, it's still pushing high and looking for a higher high right now, looking for at least 815.50 is uh, sort of the next goal on the profit price there. And so uh, whenever you want to trade those, you can hop in and you can look over here at corn. And you can go to commodities bull spreads, click on corn. You also have the binaries. And so, again, if your goal, say, is 815.50, then you got to find one that's going to work out for that profit target price, and you can do that. Or again, you also have the option of looking at the binaries and finding out, you know, what binaries might work uh, for it. Looks like you know, corn has just blown through a lot of the binary levels at this moment, and um, so if you're bullish on it, you can always go in. And there's a lot of different ways to take advantage of that, but you could sell the binary, uh, basically saying that you think that it's going to, you know, be above or below a certain price. But if you buy the binary, then what you're saying is, I think corn will be above, you know, 807.50 at a certain time. And by doing that, then um, you'll walk in the price as long as it stays above that price. And then over here on the weeklies, you can also do the same thing. Um, and then these actually go all the way till Friday. So that can be uh, really, really beneficial. And uh, one of the things you want to remind you of um, that we're bullish on the corn there on the September is you also want to make sure that you're always looking at the month. If you're trading on Nadex for corn, okay, Make sure you're looking at the month that lines up with it. And, you know, we've had the same thing. We've been bullish on, 
you know, corn on Nadex right here. You can see basically, you know, most of the morning. And um, so on Nadex, when you're looking at it, make sure you line up with the contract month, so September, okay? So even though December is the more liquid future month there, September, and it would be the, the uh, future contract you're going to be looking at. And you can go in here, and if you don't have a futures uh, thing, just go in and look at the master spread. That's the widest spread you'll see. And pull up the master spread, click on the chart right there. That chart is going to be very identical um, to it. And like, you know, I use Ninja for most of my charts, but uh, you can go in here and you can get a very, very similar price to where the market is currently trading just by looking at the master spread. But again, if we hop back over to either the, you know, the intradays, um, we go, okay, well, corn's sitting right now at, on for the September future, it's sitting at, let's see, right around 808, um, you know, 0.25 right there. And, you know, you're trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do next? Well, you could look at the spreads, which one do you want to trade? And so that option that you might want to do is, well, if you wanted to sell it, if you thought it was going to fall back down, you can go in and you can, you know, you can sell the spread right here, $40 risk, $160 reward. You could also go through and you can look at some of the other spreads that are available, or like I said, the binaries. So the binaries um, is where you can go in here and you can go, you know, basically since it's already busted through every binary level, uh, then you'd basically have to take a position saying, I, I think it's going to stay above it, or I think it's going to do a pullback. So maybe like a 50% retracement back to 800 or something like that before the close of the trading day on that. And then, you know, um, always be aware when the ag reports come out. So those come out when you want to be aware of that because that's a big week for corn and for soybeans. And you can trade both of those over on the Nadex um, exchange. And again, it is a U.S. exchange. It's uh, registered with the CFTC. It's fully regulated. And all the products on Nadex have complete defined risk, meaning you can never lose more than your margin that you put up to place the trade. And you can trade as little as $100, you can actually start trading live. And um, I mean, there's trades in here that literally are a few bucks to put on. So five bucks, 10 bucks, $2, um, $20, $50. And a lot of them are, you know, they're not like this crazy bad trades. They're actually a lot of good trades, especially on the bull spreads. So uh, definitely want to take advantage of that. Check it out. If you haven't signed up for a demo account, grab your demo account and uh, follow along with us from 12 to 1 um, Central, 1 to 2 Eastern Time, every day here on TFNN.com, TFNN.MOBI. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Y'all have a great day.